Hey guys, what's up? Hope you guys are having a great day today and welcome back for another episode of the weekly market analysis. I'm actually doing this video a little earlier than I normally do. I normally do this video on Wednesday, uh, but this week I'm doing it on a Tuesday. So, I mean, one day early, not really that big of a deal, but uh, I just have stuff I got to do later on in the week. So I'm already kind of ahead of my work and I, I wanted to just kind of get this out of the way and uh, do this early. And I actually already came in on Monday and took some trades because I already got ahead of work on Monday and everything. So I figured, hey, why not do the video today? Couldn't hurt, right? So that being said, guys, let's go ahead and go over the currency pairs that we got going for today. Uh, yesterday, I took th four trades. Yeah, about four trades, I'd say. Uh, one on the pound CAD, the dollar Swiss, the Aussie USD, and then the Aussie CAD. Now, I'm about to take another trade on the Aussie CAD, or at least I'm hoping I'm going to, and I haven't really gone through my entire portfolio uh, this morning. I only, I only went through like the first couple pairs, but um, that being said, let's uh, just go ahead and dive into this. So first, as you can see, the pound CAD is the winner of this week so far. Um, I ended up predicting it accurately. You know, I measured my Fib retracement tool from this structure low to this structure high. And we got my Fib retracement of a 618 entry level right there. And uh, that's all she wrote. Now, I know that I could have, and many probably could argue that I should have measured from here. And even if I had measured from this structure low to this structure high, I still, I actually don't think I actually would have gotten involved. But the reason I chose this one down here was largely because this was the low that was created before we broke this structure level right here. Okay, that was the main reason why I chose this low. Now this low, as you can see, we came up and then we got rejected. We never broke any kind of structure level. You know, this is the start from the actual move that gave me the break of structure. Now, Grant, technically, the real start to that move was really back here. We we started here, we extended, we retraced, and then we extended again. And that's, so this is really where it started, but because this was the low right before this move broke out of the structure level, this is the low I chose. And you can do this. This was the minor structure level, which Again, it was minor. You could take trades off minor structure levels all day long. With regards to how accurate they are, you know, it's not as as good as taking it from a major or a, a m more significant structure level. I don't know if you would call it. This is the major structure level, as you can very obviously see here. This, again, probably would be a bit more significant than this one, I would say. Now, if this broke out to the, to the, to the upside and then retraced, I would have used that low that it that, that that move created so that being said though this was our winner for this for this week so far uh hopefully we have more so far um it's not looking like we were going to but uh and i'll show you guys that in a minute but so far so good so dollar swiss i took this trade yesterday i found this trade and so far so good we got entered we're moving down we're in the green zone so that makes me happy overall as you you know as you probably figured out by now if you've been watching me for any length of time this is how i measured my fib retracement tool from the swing high to the swing low because we are bearish here and i got my fib retracement six my 618 fib retracement entry level right here and thankfully the market moved up and got it gave us the ability to get involved now i'm really really hoping that we're going to continue lower because this is going to suck if we rally and i get stopped out um it always sucks when that happens but it's going to suck even more moving on to the aussie dollar this is where the losers start to come in uh they're not big losers but they do uh combine to a, uh about 125 dollars worth of of losses whereas the pound cat actually ended up making 152 remember guys this is all hypothetical none of this is is 100 you know none of this is 100 accurate or anything of the sort this is all hypothetical okay so just please try to keep that in mind this is me just practicing my chart analysis and showing you guys my journey of what it takes to become a consistently profitable trader okay you know i'm not a consistently profitable trader i have made money in trading, I have not made money with regards to forex trading. I've made money with regards to options trading, but it was on an unback tested strategy in the past, and I no longer do that. So the fact remains is that, you know, while you can make money without a, uh, 
a strategy, you are really kind of flying blind and you don't really know the consistency of the strategy whatsoever on the current market that you're trading. So it's just a good idea to to make sure you are back testing your strategy. When you're risking your real money, guys, you you earned that money. It took you a long time to earn that money. So just make sure that you're not unnecessarily risking that money. That might actually be a good idea. Look at that. Well, we did break below and we are retracing. Ah, hmm, hmm, interesting. Let's go ahead and put an entry level on here just in case. Let's do orange and let's do a blue line just to highlight that even though we touched it, I'm going to have to touch it again in order to actually get involved. Okay, that said though, let's go ahead and look at it, this trade. So we came down and we broke below the structure low right here. So I was hoping that if I measured my Fib retracement tool from this minor structure level right here, I know it's a small one, but I was hoping that we would get a very strong trend to the downside and that we would only barely come up and then roll over. That didn't happen, unfortunately. We ended up... Uh, well, kind of like you see here, we ended up rallying a little higher. Now, this could still mean that we are bearish. This could also mean that we are officially bullish. I mean, if we zoom out to the higher time frame on the daily chart, as you can see, we most certainly are definitely bullish ever since March 20th of, of this month or of this year. The only problem that I see here is if we go ahead and we zoom out all the way to the weekly chart, we've been bearish literally since... August of 2011. So for nine years, we've been bearish. Now, right here, we had a bit of a bullish trend, a little retracement, and this lasted for two years. This lasted from January 2016 to January 2018. So this was a two-year bullish trend that was really more of a retracement inside of the overarching bearish trend. I've even gotten people who've commented saying that on this Aussie dollar trade, saying that, oh, no, man, it's bullish. You know, look at the, the dragonfly candlestick. It's bullish. And it's like, first of all, I don't even know what the hell a dragonfly candlestick is. Not, not to be disrespectful, I've never even heard of that as a candlestick pattern. Now, I don't trade candlestick patterns, so it it's not unusual for me to not be aware of candlestick patterns. I mean, but sometimes they just freaking come up with all kinds of random names for their patterns. I mean, I've heard of, you know, shooting star, you know, hammer, a hammer, like this would be classified as a shooting star, I think. But then some candlestick patterns can be bullish. Some appear to be bearish. I, I mean, come on. And, and how accurate and consistent are candlesticks? I don't know. I don't trade them. I don't use them in my trades. This, I think, is considered a shooting star. And this is considered a bearish at the top of a, of a trend. This is considered a bearish candlestick because the, the market came all the way up and got rejected. But as you can see, it only resulted in a small decline and then we ended up rallying. So this candlestick didn't mean anything for anything long term. It didn't mean anything with regards to the long term trend. It didn't, it didn't really apply to that. Here we've got like a hammer. I think because like I guess up here is like the, the anvil and this is the handle and basically we came we came down but we got rejected we got pulled back up again so that's usually a bullish sign and as you can see we declined a little bit here and then we rallied higher but then as you can see here we had a big candlestick I don't even I don't think this would be classified as a shooting star but we had a big candlestick that clearly indicated more of a bearish move but and we did we were bearish for a little bit and then we went higher again so are candlesticks something you should base your trades off purely no they're really not they're not something that you should you should base your trades off purely here's a great example look at this sucker this is a big 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 red candlestick and it's got a massive red wick Usually this is a bullish indicator did we get a bullish pop well we got a small bullish pop and then we rallied and totally destroyed it so just because somebody tells you that, oh, we've got this big, you know, dragonfly witch on a broomstick candlestick. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, just because we've got a big candlestick and it doesn't mean a whole lot. It, it, it doesn't. I mean, right here, you see we've got a hammer. We just collapsed. Yeah, we eventually went bullish, so maybe you could say this was a bit of a delayed indicator. Here, though, we've got a big candlestick up here and a big candlestick down here, or a big candlestick wicks in both directions. This is usually a doji. This doji indicates that 
there's market indecision. The market doesn't really know where it's going. Now, if he's talking about a big candlestick pattern, sometimes patterns of candlesticks can have three or four different candlesticks inside of the pattern itself. So you could utilize maybe a dragonfly is something like that, but I, I don't know. I mean, it it's it's not one that I've heard of, but it's. Uh, I don't know. Not one that I've heard of. I'm not going to discount it because I don't know anything about it, and I don't trade candlesticks. But at the same time, I don't, you know, it could, he could be right. We could be in a reversal. I just, when I zoom out to the weekly chart, I see that we are, we've been bearish since two, for over nine years, okay? We've been bearish for a very, very long time, and we've had a bullish trend here, and this one move is bigger than... It is higher than this move right here. I actually did measure it out. It is, in fact, higher than this one. I mean, I'll go ahead and measure it out for you guys. Uh, about right there. It's going to be a little long, but you kind of get the idea, right? It's going to be difficult to see. Maybe a little higher. So, so th that's... Oh, actually, we're a little too high. So this is kind of about it. You can see that we were a little higher here than than that one. It took two years for the market to do this. This happened in a very short period of time, um, within literally from March to June. So whereas this one took two years to, to occur. So I don't know. Is this a reversal? I have no idea. It doesn't look like a reversal to me. Um, candlestick patterns are not enough to convince me that this is a reversal. If nothing else, it shows me that there is a possibility that the market could be going uh, going low or going higher, and that the rever the tr the nine year trend is over, and that we are going to be reversing and we're going to continue to go higher. But I'll be completely honest, I don't know. So, but candlestick patterns alone are just not enough to convince me that that is the case. But unfortunately, this one ended up being a loser as you can very clearly see here. And yeah, it was only like 62, 63 hypothetical dollars, so not too bad. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep an eye out on this sucker. Hopefully we'll get, get up here to um, get me involved. I kind of, like I said, I mean, I found it late, unfortunately. All this st stuff, this happened late last night and early this morning. And I didn't even come into the markets until probably about 8 a.m. this morning. So uh, slept in a little bit, unfortunately. Well, I also had other things I had to take care of too. You know, I have to take care of a lot of stuff in the morning, every single morning. So, thus is the nature of being a husband and having a, a beautiful wife and a family and, and, and whatnot. So, anyways, that being said, guys, hopefully we'll get involved with this one and hopefully we'll make some money. But um, it's not looking like we will. It's looking like it's going to roll over and my analysis was, in fact, correct. We were going to continue lower. I just measured from the wrong measuring point, which happens all the time. Sucks, but it does happen. Okay. Aussie CAD. Here we are with the Aussie CAD. Again, just like the Aussie USD, we ended up getting stopped out. I decided to measure from a minor structure level right here, this structure high to this structure low. And we got right here, well, we got entered in the, the FIB 618 FIB retracement level, which is also my entry level. And um, unfortunately, we ended up rallying and breaking structure. This indicates to me because we broke structure the upside, we didn't break structure up here, but this does indicate that we're probably going to, to uh, more than likely, we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to rally. We're going to rally and we're going to continue higher. That is what this looks like to me, but again, time will tell. So I actually redrew this in this way. I actually went ahead and redrew it. We broke structure up here. We broke above. We closed above. So that gives me the ability to get long. Now, this doesn't necessarily, well, so long as we actually get down to the 93.30, you know, uh, price level. That said, though, this is something that does occur for me every now and then. Um, you guys probably don't see me take these types of trades. Usually you see me take trades where it's like, let me find an example here that's actually pretty good, uh, right here. So you see me take trades like this where we have consolidation, we come up, we break structure to the upside right here, as you can see. You, well, actually, did we? Did we, did we, did we, uh, we broke above and then we kind of broke above. I mean, we definitely broke above this structure level and we definitely closed above the structure level. So I guess, sure, uh, we did. So you would see me take my fib retracement tool from this structure low and we go swing low, 
to swing high up to this structure high and you would have seen me take my trade like this now what I probably would have done is initially I probably would have measured from here I probably would have measured from here would have gotten stopped out somewhere around here and then I would have measured a second time from here I take two I, so to take a second crack at it and because we're already under my entry I figured if this does go higher I'll place my entry here if it goes higher I'll get involved if it continues to go lower I won't get involved no harm done right so we got we got involved and then we ended up rallying and I ended up making money the next trade I would have taken was right here so I would have stair-stepped my way up here. I would have been like, okay, well, we broke above here. Let's go ahead. You know, actually, I wouldn't have stair-stepped my way up because this is the only structure level that where we actually broke. And I would have had my fib retracement tool down, and I would have drawn it. Oh, nope, we actually ended up going higher. So, okay, so I would have stair-stepped. So I stair-stepped it up here, okay? Now, stair-stepping is an actual uh, trending pattern in the markets. You know, usually it looks like this. We come up. We come down, come up again, come down, come up again, come down. That's what stair-stepping usually looks like. That's not really what I'm talking about, though. I'm just talking about how I am constantly moving my my fib retracement tool up higher and higher. So initially, I moved it up here. We didn't get a retracement like I wanted into the 618 fib retracement, so I'm going to move it up here. Now we did. So we're, we're, we're already long, and we're waiting, we're waiting, and we're higher. And we finally got filled. These are the types of trades you guys typically see me trade. You don't normally see me take trades like this where we break structure in the opposite direction of what I was looking in. I was looking bearish, but we break structure to the upside to be bullish. And then we're going to roll and then we roll over. But because we broke the structure level here, this is a valid trading strategy for me. Again, all I have to see is a break of structure and... A retracement into a 618 fib retracement level that's all I have to see now this unfortunately does give me a lot of trading signals which is one of the reasons I love it I can trade all the time there's always a trading signal going on and I absolutely love it I'm never starved for trades here's the downside with that you over trade you have an issue of trading too many trades and as a result you have the issue of not holding on to profits because you end up taking more losses due to overtrading. This is a very, very serious problem with this trading strategy, and it comes with a, a lot of challenges. Now, I haven't traded this with live money yet, and I have back tested this over three different currency pairs, the Aussie CAD, the Aussie USD, and the CAD Swiss. So far, they all have a positive expectancy. The biggest issue that I, I, I see here with regards to these – the currency pairs and how I back tested them was that I back tested them from 2010 to 2012 that gave me over 100 trades and I always go off the rule that you need 100 trades in your back testing or at least five years so I have a little over two and a half years and 100 trades what that means is that um what it I guess I'm a little worried you know what if it doesn't end up working out. Like, what if these, this strategy, what if I didn't test them closer to, you know, more recent price data? So I ended up uh, doing that with the Euro Yen. The Euro Yen is the next currency pair that I started back testing with. And so far, it's losing money to a, a lot. It's just not consistent enough. I mean, at minimum, I think you need like a 51% win, ra win ratio. Like, a 50, you need to win 51% of the time. And. Yeah, I'm just not seeing that with the Euro Yen. But I started back testing in I think 2018, 2017, 2018, somewhere around there because I'm hoping that by the time I reach 100 trades, I'm going to be in the 2020 or at least 2019. So, I don't know, but so far, uh it's not looking good for me. <laughs> so, we'll just have to see kind of how that continues. I just started it, so maybe, you know, it'll start losing and we'll come back. But so far, I mean, I out of 15 trades that I've taken thus far, I've only think I've won like two or three. So, you know, sometimes that's just the way that goes. You're not going to backtest over a currency pair that's profitable every single time. You're not going to always backtest over profitable currency 
pairs. A lot of times you're going to backtest over currency pairs that are not profitable, but you still need to test with all 100. Now, if I was to take the first 15 trades and say, nope, not going to waste my time with this. This is a losing currency pair. What if it isn't? What if it isn't a losing currency? pair? What if it ends up reversing and end up making loads of money? Now, I will say this. If I go from 2017 or whatever, and I end up draining my $3,000 account all the way down to zero, okay, fine. I have nothing more to trade. So clearly, and let's assume that happens before the 100 trades or the five years, okay, well then clearly I was, uh, it, it's not worth continuing, right? Clearly it's not worth it. But that being said though, guys, this is the trade that we're going to look for. I I drew this one down here. This is a much larger trade. If we were to actually get rejected here and fall over, this would be the larger trade and I would end up taking two losses on the same currency pair. So this is a bit of a gamble. This is a bit of a gamble. This is the gamble that I'm taking in hopes that it pays off, but this is the gamble that I'm effectively taking. And that gamble is that because we broke above the structure, we're going to get down here and we're going to re and we're going to rally to at least retest these highs. And we might, and we might not. If we come up here, get rejected and fall over, I'm going to get stopped out. But I will be entered into this bigger trade. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens. This is a secondary trade, so this needs to be orange. But yeah, so that's it, guys. That is everything that I got going for today. And yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's it. That's all she wrote. So, that being said, guys, I kind of wanted to talk with you about just what it takes to become a trader and to become consistently profitable and ultimately the kind of work that goes into it. I just really want to encourage you guys to keep moving forward even though, you know, it sucks, right? The journey isn't always fun. I could tell you right now, I'm not a consistently profitable trader while I have made money in the markets before. Uh, again options market and stock market, not, not currency markets. You know, I will say this. It can be very, very demoralizing to trade like this and have nothing but losers. In fact, one of the worst things you can do is personalize your trades. And I struggle with this. Every trader I think does, but I struggle with this too. What do I mean by personalizing trades? Well, if you can notice here, we went through a ton of trades, right? We went through 33 trades and the bulk of them were losers. 33 trades over the course of eh, a, month, a month, over the course of a little, a little over a month, 33 trades. And yeah, it... <laughs> I mean, seriously, and it was the bulk of them were losers. And if you can look at the equity curve down here, the rolling return, as you can see, I mean, we did go through a winning period right here, but again, now, now we're back to being a, a losing trend again. And as you can see here, guys, look, the truth is, is that when you start taking all these losses, it's really easy to start personalizing it and to start saying that I just suck. I suck at this. Why am I even doing this? Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm not doing very well. And, you know, now here it doesn't bother me. This kind of loss, these losses on this trading view, trade analysis journal, I know it's a mouthful. This doesn't really bother me that much, largely because I know it's unback tested. But it's still depressing to come in. I mean, even just last week. You know, I, t I was taking one trade, one trade, one trade, and it was just losing, losing, losing. And I'm like, gosh, man, why am I even doing this? I'm just losing all the time. And then I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, okay, yeah, you are losing. But hey, you know, I mean, this none of this is backtested. So you really don't know what you're trading. You could be trading like, I mean, we're trading something like uh, all of these currency pairs. You know, you could easily be trading... A massive amount of currency pairs that really aren't doing anything good for you, right? I mean, look at this. We've got how many? I mean, almost twenty currency pairs here. That's a lot, and it's not 
unusual to find, I mean, to, to hear that there's maybe eight, nine, maybe even 10 or more tr- you know, currency pairs in here that just this strategy doesn't work on. You know, when the markets are uh, with the euro yen, one of the issues that I'm having with the euro yen is that the euro yen, when the markets are trending, they don't get deep enough. They don't give deep enough retracements for me to get involved. So even though the market is trending, and generally speaking, my strategy fares fairly well in a trending market, I have to have a deep enough of retracement to get me that 618 Fib retracement level. If I don't get that and I get like a 382 Fib retracement, I can't get involved. So in a, tre- in a very strong trending market, I'm not going to be able to get involved. That's a market condition that even though usually trending markets work in my favor, if I don't get a deep enough retracement in the trending market, it's not going to help me one little bit. And then I know that my strategy doesn't work in consolidation very much. You can make money with this strategy in consolidation, but it just doesn't seem like it works in consolidation a lot. So again, during consolidating times, it doesn't work. During very powerful trends, it doesn't work. So you're looking for a relatively weak trend. I mean, that's a highly specific thing that you're looking for. But it does, it it happens all the time and there are opportunities, okay? But with the Euro-Yen, both of the circumstances that highlight the Euro-Yen pair so far for me have not been positive. Very strong trends and a lot of consolidation. And unfortunately, none of those cater to my strategy. So you have to have trends that retrace every now and then to a 618 Fib retracement. And yeah, but that being said though, how many of these currency pairs are actually profitable? How many of them are and how many of them aren't? You know, out of the 20 some odd currency pairs that I have here, I think I have like 23 currency pairs here. It's a... Yeah, there's 23 here. 23 currency pairs. I don't trade the the dollar uh, Chilean peso. That's not something that I trade. But... um. But still, 23 currency pairs, who's to say that they're all, you know, that they're all working really well? Who's to say that 13 or 15 don't work at all? Right? No, I don't know. I haven't tested them. And you know what? I don't know if I will ever get to test all of them because that would take me a long time. And I'm already struggling to keep up with my back testing enough as it is. But in, when you're doing your back testing, it's really hard to keep with a a currency pair like the euro yen that does nothing but lose you money. You already know that it's losing you money and yet you still need to back test it further. You don't want to personalize your trades. Whether you're back testing, whether it's forward testing, you know what I'm doing right here, this is classified as forward testing. I'm testing over historic, I mean not historical data, I'm testing over live data. So that's what this would be classified as is forward testing. And you know it's usually something you do after you do back testing. You don't normally forward test first and then back test later. You normally back test over historical data and then you forward test over live data. And you forward test usually for a smaller amount of time, like maybe like three months or something. So that's another reason why I'm doing this is I'm actually testing the Aussie CAD, the Aussie USD, and the CAD Swiss. Um, I actually do have a few of those trades here. I mean, Aussie CAD, I trade 7% of the time. You know, Aussie USD, I don't know because it's not showing me that. And CAD Swiss, I don't know because it's not showing me that. But I have taken those trades before. So, you know, I mean, it's it's just one of those things, guys. Try not to personalize your trades. And I understand what I'm asking you to do because trust me, I am not the best at it. I start losing a lot and I start thinking, I suck. Why am I even doing this? The thoughts just naturally run into your head. You don't even, it's not like you you choose to think of those things, right? But that's just what you tend to think of. Why am I even doing this? This sucks. I hate losing. Am I stupid? Do I not know what I'm doing? These are like the negative thoughts that come into your head. You really have to force them out and you really have to try your hardest to not personalize your issues, to not personalize your trades. Yeah, this doesn't mean don't accept responsibility when your trades don't work out and it's because you made a mistake. Just know it doesn't mean that you're stupid, okay? It doesn't mean that you're really bad at this. 
I mean, if you're losing a lot of money, then yes, it, it probably does. But just know that when, if you've done all the necessary legwork, don't personalize it. Just say that's just the way that it goes. That's just trading sometimes, and it sucks, and it doesn't feel good. You know, one of the reasons that most people don't get into trading, or at least they get into it and they fail, A, failure is a choice that you make. So if you choose to fail, that is your decision. If you choose to turn away from something, that is your choice. Okay? But when the reason why most people choose to fail and choose to give up is largely because it wears on you psychologically and emotionally. And I don't really know how else to describe it, but that's why the bulk of traders don't become profitable traders. That's why the bulk of traders end up giving up after a while. Because in the end, it is psychological warfare. And nobody likes to lose. It's just part of human nature. No one likes to lose over and over and over and over again. And there's only so much of that that you can take. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you got to try and not personalize your trades. You know, you have to try and to maintain your mental stability during this. And it's not mental stability in the sense that, you know, you're, you're going crazy, but mental stability in the sense that you just don't want to give up, right? You want to continue to push forward. You want to try to achieve that lofty goal like being a consistently profitable trader. But it's a hard journey. It's a difficult one. It takes a long time. It takes a crap ton of work. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. Like I said, the bulk of people do not have what's in them psychologically and cannot handle the emotional stresses that it puts on them. They start to internalize it. They start to personalize it. They start to make themselves feel crappy thinking that they are the thing that sucks. In some cases, this may actually be true. Not every trader is cut out for trading. But in some cases, it's not true. You did the necessary work. You just haven't, you know, haven't hit it yet. Or maybe the, the necessary work you did was wrong. I, I don't know. What I do know is that this stuff messes with your mind. It messes with your emotions. It's not easy. But that doesn't mean to give up. Giving up is a choice that you make. It is, you don't just randomly give up. It's like, oh, well, today I guess I'm, yeah, I guess I just gave up. It accidentally happened, whatever. No, that doesn't happen. You only fail, you only give up when you choose to. Okay? So if you are in this whole trading thing, if you're coming to my YouTube channel, if you're coming here and you want to learn how to trade, you want to see the realities of trading, which is the whole reason I'm doing this. I'm trying to show you the realities of it all trying to show you the realities of it. And, you know, if that's you and you want to see the realities of it, you want someone who's honest and going to tell you, yeah, I might not be wrong. I, or, I might be wrong. I don't know. You know, so many traders, they don't even admit that they're wrong. Many times they just trade and when they are wrong, they don't say it. I will tell you, I was wrong. Okay? But the whole point of this journey is to show you the realities of it. And I believe I will come out on the other end and I believe that I will absolutely become a consistently profitable trader. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be messing with it. I'd, I'd be focusing more on blogging or making other YouTube videos of entrepreneurship and economics and things of that nature. I wouldn't even be wasting my time with trading. But the reason I am, you know, is because I believe that I will become a consistently profitable trader. And uh, quite frankly, I, I love it. I love trading. It's a big passion for me. To give it up would decimate me to admit that I'm a failure to always look back on this part of my life and realize that I did all this work for nothing I don't know if I could honestly come to that conclusion that would be very hard for me so you know I'm not going to choose to give up that is I'm not going to choose to fail I'm going to choose to keep going no matter how painful it is and I would highly encourage you to do the same I would highly encourage you to get out there and to continue to push forward with your trading, continue on your journey. And guys, I think that eventually we do all the right stuff. We're going to get it. We're going to eventually hit it. You know? 
We're going to eventually hit the success, hit consistent profitability. So anyways, guys, you know, I didn't really mean for that to be a somber thing. I, I meant that to uh, be encouraging and it is. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep fighting. You will get there. You will achieve it. I believe that you will. As long as you're doing the right stuff, you will get there, okay? Keep fighting. Trading is warfare. Trading is psychological warfare. Or another way of viewing it is, I guess, trading is kind of like a fisherman on the sea, right? The, the sea whips you around on your boat, but, you're go but you know that if you just keep, stay out there a little longer, you know, you can freaking haul in one of the biggest catches of your life and you could make a ton of money and have food to feed your family i mean it could be amazing but it's like a fisherman out on sea you're battling the sea you're fighting the sea and every time you cast the nets every time you cast your rod it's just every time it's a game of numbers every single time you increase your chance of winning so guys don't give up Keep fighting. Keep going. You only you only fail when you choose to fail. Don't choose to fail. Failure is a choice that you make, and this is true in every aspect of life. It is a it's a choice that you make. Don't make that choice. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Make sure that you're going to be successful. Don't choose to fail. All right, guys. You know, again, I hope that was an encouraging message because it shows you that your failures or successes are totally in your control. It's not that crap happens to you in life and you can't control. This is something you can control. Your failures, your successes are something that you can control, okay? The only thing that that happens is, yes, there are things that happen in life that we can't control, but we can choose how we react to them. And that can, and our reactions can be successful reactions or failed reactions, bad reactions, right? So in this case, this is no different. You can choose to not fail, but this isn't a, a natural disaster or something uncontrollable. This is something that you can absolutely control. It just puts the onus on you, which some of you may not like that. Some of you like the idea of admit of saying that it's not, I couldn't control it. It's, I just couldn't make it work. You know, it's not my fault. You know, I'm not a failure because of it. You know, I don't even think anyone else does this, you know, okay, fine. You can blame it on external circumstances to make yourself feel better. But in the end, you chose to give up. You chose to give up. That's why you failed because you chose to, if you had continued, you didn't choose, you wouldn't have chosen to fail. So guys, keep that in mind. Failure is a choice. You don't have to choose it. It is totally up to you. It is your it is within your power to do it. You control your destiny. You are the master of your fate and you are the captain of your soul. Your life is a direct representation of the choices that you have made. Or maybe another, a better way of saying it is your life is a direct result of the choices that you have made. So if you want to live a better life, then choose to live a better life. Make the choices. Make better choices. If you want to become a consistently profitable trader and you don't want to fail, then choose not to fail. Choose to continue to push forward until you find that solution. So you backtested on a ton of currency pairs and you didn't end up finding the solution. Well, maybe you just, you found, you didn't fail so much as you just found a strategy that didn't work. So choose another one choose more maybe maybe you didn't fail so much because this strategy didn't work on this currency pair you know you just found a currency pair the strategy didn't work on right that's the whole idea but it's in your control you have the power as as funny as that sounds because it sounds like something out of a marvel movie or something like that but it, seriously you have the power you choose no one else does but you so make the choice continue push forward and eventually, I, th I believe that you'll get there. I think perseverance is, is, is heavily understated in today's world. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got uh, some motivation out of this. I hope that pumped you up. But um, hey, hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you did like it. And don't forget to check out the, the website at newmillenniumwealth.com. Also... 
Let's talk about some affiliate programs before we close out here. Uh, you know, TradingView. Hey, look, we're already on it. Guys, TradingView is one of the coolest trading platforms out there. I mean, look at this. They, they have a stock scanner, guys. I mean, this is one of the coolest platforms out there. It's the best charting platform out there, guys. It is absolutely amazing. And you know what? It, it's not that expensive. $15 a month. That's all you need for a pro for a pro account. $15 a month. I mean, not bad at all. I'm going to be honest with you. Not bad one little bit. They've got crypto scanners, Forex scanners, stock scanner, scanners. You know, they got a whole bunch of stuff here. I mean, you can even look at bonds. I mean, that's pretty cool. Futures, indices. I, I think the bonds are actually pretty cool. You can actually see the, the, the yields on on this stuff. If you if you guys are listening to this via the podcast, um, I do apologize. Um, check out the YouTube channel and you'll, you'll be able to see these videos and whatnot. But guys, look, TradingView is one of the best trading platforms out there. You can even trade straight from the charts with your with the correct and the, the right brokers that actually have deals with TradingView. You know, you can literally take buy and sell orders and all that kind of stuff. You can, you can make those orders. You can trade legitimately straight from the charts, which is unbelievably cool you can code in automated strategies and automated indicators and guys it is an amazing platform it's amazing and it's cheap it's not that expensive so guys if you're interested go check it out tradingview.com um, the next one is tier one trading naturally why else guys we're talking about trading and really I can help you with the foundations of it. I can help you with the basics of it. I can help you by showing you my journey, but when you want really in-depth knowledge, you guys, it's best to go to tier one trading. All right, tier one trading will give you a massive amount of knowledge. They got great guys there, Akil Stokes, Jason Greystone, and even Charles Miles. Guys, the, all of these guys, Darren Oglesby, he was the, the founder. He actually discovered the cipher pattern. Absolutely amazing harmonic pattern. It's really, really cool. So guys, look, go to check out tier one trading. They don't just teach you a strategy and call it good and, and hope that you just trade their strategy over and over and over again. You'll be successful. That's not what they do. They, they teach you how to ultimately become a consistently profitable trader. I'm going to tell you guys a, a quick story. I already know that this uh, video is going on for, for a while. When I was learning how to trade, I had a, a buddy of mine, a good friend, and we were both learning to trade at the same time. And my buddy ended up blowing a lot of money on his trading. You see, the the company that he went to ended up teaching him a strategy. They didn't teach him how to trade. They teach they taught him a strategy. They taught him a couple of patterns and things like that, but they didn't really emphasize back testing as far as I'm aware. They didn't really emphasize forward testing. They just they didn't emphasize having a trading plan as far as I'm aware. They emphasized a strategy. And following their golden rules as they as they termed them. And he spent a lot of money on this course and he traded and traded and traded. He started winning a lot of trades because the market was doing nothing but going up. And he was, you know, doing a lot of different trades and stuff like that. And he actually ended up pulling his account up to a very, very high amount. I mean, people would just, <laughs> there's loads of people out there that would just kill for this kind of money, right? Tons of people out there that would love the kind of money that he made. And then he just got over overconfident. He had the winner's curse. It's an economic term. And he ended up uh, losing it all. I'm not going to tell you exactly how much money he had. I'm not going to tell you how much money he lost and, and, you know, where he's at today. But he virtually, he blew up his account. He doesn't have much left. I'll tell you that much. And the, the kind of money that he had, again, was like money people dream of having. And guys, he didn't have a, a back-tested strategy. He didn't even have a trading plan. All he had was a strategy that some company gave him when he paid a massive amount of money. The company more or less sold him a lifestyle and a strategy. They didn't really sell him the skill of trading. Tier 1 trading doesn't do that for you. Tier 1 trading doesn't just teach you a strategy. They teach you how to form strategies, how to create them, how to backtest them, how to verify them. And then once you've done all the work that Tier 1 trading is, you know, ultimately takes you through the and whatnot, they end up teaching you 
how to exponentially grow your trading accounts. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but that is an amazing, amazing thing. And you're not going to find it anywhere but Tier 1 Trading. They're awesome. They're amazing. Go check them out. I'll put the link in the description below. Yes, it's an affiliate link. It it, it will. I do receive money. You can get a 14-day trial for free, and you can check it out on your own. But guys, look, th if you like what I'm doing, consider going to these places. These, pla these, these affiliate programs, they help me. They help what I'm doing here. They help support me. So if you love what I'm doing, don't just like, subscribe, oh, and don't just hit that alert button in there. And if you, <laughs> you should be if you like if you like the content. But also consider going there and supporting the my affiliates and just consider supporting them and and consider supporting me. It's a win-win situation for you. You guys get a product or service that I know is a good quality service. I use TradingView all the time. I've been trained by Akil Stokes. He was one of my trading mentors. Jason Greystone was another. I'd say it was definitely probably more Akil Stokes than Jason Greystone because I don't trade the London session. Charles Miles, he helps me all the time, even to this day. I can contact him. I can ask him questions. These guys stick with you through thick and thin, and they go the mile. They want to see you be successful. So guys, go check Tier 1 Trading out. You won't be disappointed. They won't turn you down a bad road. They're going to help you get there. They're going to give you the tools that you need. All right. And last but not least, Skillshare. Skillshare is awesome, guys. Skillshare.com. This is one of the biggest libraries of courses that you could take. You know, it's part of this trend of online education where they teach you all kinds of stuff. And for only like $100 a year. $100 a year. I think you sign up. They give you a month or two months free. I don't remember exactly the deal that they have going on. I'm pretty sure it's two months free. But guys, they got like hundreds of thousands of courses that are on their platform, ranging anywhere from like website design to email copywriting. It is absolutely amazing. All right. I've used them. I still use them to this day. Anytime I have a skill that I want to learn, you know, I go there, I look it up. You know, I've been looking up uh, recently, I've been and looking into YouTube ads. So that's something I've been doing some researching on, seeing if there's any YouTube ad courses that are out there. Skillshare is absolutely amazing, guys. They got all kinds of courses. It's just good to have on hand. Anytime you want to learn something new, hey, I wonder if Skillshare has it. That's usually what I'm always thinking. I wonder if Skillshare has a course on that. So I don't have to go off and spend $1,000 for another course. I can just go to Skillshare. Now, guys, Guys, it's amazing. They've got so much stuff. So, hey, go sign up. It's dirt cheap. You're investing in yourself, and it's not even that much money. It's amazing. So, check them out if you're interested in learning a new skill, which you should be. Even if it's not trading, you should be learning a new skill always. Always reinvest in you because at the end of the day, your freedom is tied to your wealth, and that's up to you. How you make the money, how you become wealthy is all you. So get out there, learn new skills, make yourself more valuable. So guys, if you'll do all that, I'll be greatly appreciative. And hey, if you like what I'm doing, share it with a friend, you know, promote it on social media, help me grow a community of people and help me spread this message of financial freedom and empowerment to as many people as we possibly can. If you'll do all that for me, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode. As always, know the risks, plan accordingly and have a great day.